Guinea worm disease is not one that you can become immune to. It's an animal. It's a worm that burrows through your body and grows very large. If you've had guinea worm once, you can certainly have it again and again and again. One of the fundamental problems associated with disease elimination in various areas and ultimately eradication of a disease from the planet concerns being able to track that disease. You need to know where people are infected. You need to know whether or not the intervention strategies are having an effect. In 1986, there were an estimated 3.5 million cases of Guinea worm disease in Africa and Western Asia. Local African communities and global health organizations, including the Carter Center, headed by former U.S. President Jimmy Carter, have led efforts to eliminate the disease since the late 80s. Efforts include issuing water filtration devices to affected communities and establishing education programs about the dangers of unfiltered water. As of 2014, only 126 cases remain across four countries. If eliminated in these four countries, Guinea worm disease will become the second disease in history behind smallpox to be fully eradicated. Guinea worm disease is caused by a nematode. It's acquired by drinking water that has infected water fleas in it. Water fleas serve as the intermediate host for the larval stages of the worm. Once you consume the water with the water fleas in it and the worms are digested out in your stomach, they'll migrate around in the abdominal cavity, grow up a little bit. Males and females will mate. The females will then migrate to some sort of extremity of the body. And this is important because for the life cycle to be completed, that adult female's larval worms must get to water again where they can infect the intermediate host, the water flea. The female, when she's ready to emerge, she'll induce an incredibly painful, searing hot blister somewhere on an extremity. It's so painful and it's so hot that the afflicted individual naturally goes to seek out the cooling effects of water. I was in a little village in Ghana, not too far from the castle of our craft. How many of you have ever had uh, guinea worm? Well, this village had about 400 total population and about 300 or more had guinea worm when I got there. At the end of a brief uh, presentation where we explained what we were there, I noticed this nice looking young woman on the side of the crowd holding a baby in her right arm and I went over to her just wanted to be polite and ask the name of the baby. But when I got there, it was not a baby, it was her right breast, which is about a foot long. It had a guinea worm coming out of its nipple. Later that year, I found out that she had 11 other guinea worms coming out of different places in her body. It's not just about having the tools to intercede in the life cycle, that is, that is water filtration, but exquisite data gathering, managing that information and figuring out where the disease exists and where intervention is working and where it's not working, redoubling efforts and gathering more information. The challenges for finally eradicating guinea worm are the same challenges that have been there all along, and that is the remoteness of the populations and being able to gather the data so that the tools can be implemented and people can have their worms removed without them going to water. That's the containment issue that needs to happen so that next year no one else becomes infected. <laughs>